Hey everyone, my name is Stefan Kroos from Byte the Bytes, the world creator team, and in this video I'm going to show you the new shape layers, specifically the sculpt layer. Please be aware, this is still an early access version, so it means it's still under development, um, but we will should be pretty, pretty quickly finished with it within a month, so expect it to be released mid-August 2023. Okay, let's get started. So now if you open up World Creator, you will see a screen similar to this one here. And now let's see the shape layers. They can be all found here. And those layers are used to, yeah, to design your terrain. So you can use a mouse, you can use your, your Wacom tablet and also other tablets with the pens and uh, use them to sculpt, to modify your terrain. And it has a lot of more beneficial um, things that you can do here, which we will cover in other videos too. So in this video, I would like to do a direct sculpting. Now for that, I'm going here over to that plus icon. I'm pressing it. And there you already see that we have four shape layers available. The one is the sculpt layer. We have a stamp layer, which can be used to import height maps and color maps and stamp them on the terrain. Procedural layers are used to procedurally generate um, terrain locations such such as a volcano or something like that and to stamp it on the terrain so they're pretty similar here but the but the difference is that here you use an imported height map and here there's an internal generator that generates a height map for you it's like a small world crater and then you have map uh, then you have that map tiler layer um, that lets you directly stream real world data from map tiler for which you need to have an account um, set up in front and uh, then you can actually just uh, stamp on uh, yeah, real world data on your terrain. But for now we're just using the sculpt layer in the next video I'm showcasing the stamp layers and and so on. Okay now let's add a sculpt layer and you already see that there's an icon here there's, this is the sculpt layer. You have several operations here like Override means it's like an empty sculpting mask and override means just overrides the underlying terrain. You can also quickly see that if I'm increasing it to a 2K terrain, then you see that the sculpt layer actually just overrides everything, every part of that layer. Um, I'm switching back to 1K for now. So and you can also hit that fit to terrain button so it just matches um, the contents and the size of your underlying terrain. So you also can have add, which will just result in if you're editing, you're adding on top of the existing terrain. You have min and max on top, uh, which you can use. Um, might be useful for some reasons, but mostly it's like if you're if you're trying to create a terrain from scratch, use override. If you want to build up on an existing terrain, use add. So for this one, we just, uh, we're going to create our own terrain. So everything from scratch, so we use override. Then you have interpolation modes. This is just between, you, while you're drawing, how the things are interpolated. Um, you have a height offset, a height scale, which I can show you later, as well as the level steps here. These are the area settings, which are actually just these ones. You can move and scale the area. You can rotate an area, just click left click outside and move the mouse and you can also of course translate an area. Um, then we have something like blend size and blend roundness. This only makes sense um, if we fully filled out the mask with our drawing and we want to blend it with the underlying terrain then we can use these two values. The resolution um, tells you what resolution size the underlying um, sculpting layer has. Um, the really good thing about World Creator is because of the system that we have with the level steps and that, you don't need to have really large resolutions. It's, it just doesn't make real sense. So best is to use something like 32 of, or 64 and um, you are really pretty good to go with this. Okay, now let's start editing. Um, just hit here edit and actually right now really nothing changes. Um, this is the version 2023.1.6b, as you can see here above. Um, we already have changed this in the new upcoming 
update, uh, which will be 7b, so the next uh, early access beta version, um, then the sculpting tools will be listed here to the to the right side entirely. So you can always, you know, select the tool, start drawing, select the tool, start drawing. If you're using um, the, the version that I'm using right now, you have to right click to open the context menu to get the tools you want. Okay, um, so we have brush tools, we have grid tools, we have some actions, we have a brush with the brush settings. And also in the next beta, there will be a list of brushes that you can select, which means the brushes, um, you can actually just import them or just drop them into a folder in World Creator and World Creator will automatically import those brushes. So um, you're really good to go with your own custom brushes. However, this is a procedural brush, which means you can just change a typical, you know, typical brush like uh, image, which you then can use to draw you on the terrain. The brush radius can also be controlled by the um, by the uh, by the left uh, control key. If you hold the left control key and use the mouse wheel, you can control the size of the brush. Um, you also can control the smooth, the smoothness of the brush. Um, but this will change, so I will cover this once we finally released um, the new version in World Creator um, next next month in August, okay? So all the input settings and all this will be in, um, um, explained in, in depth and in very, very detailed afterwards. Okay, so for now, we're just going to select rays and just we we'll try to paint something here on my terrain. I also have a different view that I can use. You could also switch to the fast render mode, which is a bit more easy to draw here because you see the shape much better than in the real-time rendering view. Um, yeah, we're just doing a little bit of a, of a sculpting stuff here. And we'll check also how the other things work, like lowering things. So with that one you can lower. You have something like smooth, so we can smooth out the edges, something like this here. You can also flatten, where you have the flatten height, which means this goes to zero. So if I'm going over here, everything goes down to zero. If I'm changing that one to whatever size, like something like this, then it goes up to exactly that size. So I could use that one to create plateaus, for example, as you can see here. Um, the next one is rotate. So that means that I'm clicking on that one and I could rotate it. So it's a bit hard to explain right now. Let's let me quickly see that here. Here you can see that if I select the brush, I can rotate that element on off the terrain which is a pretty cool feature actually. So like um, easily to, uh, to adjust arms and something like that. So without changing too much and without having to completely redesign everything. So it's a really nice feature actually. Um, then you have um, scale. It's like the same, you could scale up this or scale it down a little bit. Um, you have tilt, which means like creating some, something like this here, tilting the terrain. Um, you have push and pull. That means that you're just clicking, dragging the mouse, so you can pull things and push things in and out of the terrain. You have a line that would actually just align where you click. Everything will be aligned along that, along that, uh, um, yeah, along that, uh, yeah, <laughs> elevation, terrain elevation. Okay. Um, let me just a little bit um, do you in the race things here. Um, okay, another really nice feature is uh, or are the grid tools. So they are working a little bit different as if you select add, then you see that World Creator creates a grid here. And that would mean like you're actually just selecting cells using a brush. And then you can use the left shift key to manipulate those cells. You can see the smoothness and the selected cells as a difference. You have the smoothness over here and your selected cell. So this is something also you can control with the mouse wheel while holding the left shift, uh, uh, shift key. So it's like you could do pretty nice things like pulling up this one here, then uh, pulling up, then pressing again, reducing it and pulling up that one. So it's like for creating 
more like uh, Kenyan styles. It's a really good feature in my opinion. Um, it offers a lot of new possibilities. Well, the same thing would apply for um, something like rotate. So you would have to select the cells first that you want to rotate, hit the shift key, and then you can rotate them on the terrain. Right. It also means that it's copying them actually. So like it's copying them, then you can rotate them. Um, another thing is here for scaling. It's just the same. So you're selecting the cells. So you're scaling them. You could do a tilt. So let's do a tilt on this part here. You always have to hold the left shift key to do the actions that you selected here. Then you can pull. And of course you can push. And last but not least, duplicating. That's also really cool. So you're selecting the entire part here. You hit shift key again, the left shift key, and then you duplicate that terrain part and move it around to some other location, giving you pretty nice possibilities. Okay, of course you have something like mirror X. Let me pull this over here. So mirror X, it mirrors everything back, rotate left, rotate right, or flatten out the entire terrain. I'm not going to press this because I just want to, or it doesn't really matter, let's flatten it out. We can quickly rebuild the terrain immediately for our showcase that I want to do further on. Okay, so now let's do some, some things over here. And um, I want to show you also that sculpting works pretty well, even if you have applied some some good filters. So we're going on for a for a simulation hydraulic filter. We're adding on top of it a canyon filter, like uh, yeah, oh, no, no, no. Let's do a steep terrace filter. Let's add uh, white flows on top of it, and we have some sort of a yeah to rest area and style. I don't know. It looks pretty cool with those flows here and those sediment things. We also could add a little bit more sediment. We could add a particle sediment. We could do a hydraulic sediment. We could also simulate some sand, but we will do just a simple mud sediment on it. So it looks like as if mud was coming down and uh, pushing out the mud to the along the borders. Now switch back to here. See how it looks like in a pretty nice rendering view here. Um, and of course, we could also apply the materials. Um, oh, we don't really need materials right now. So just let's just adjust a little bit the rendering here. I think um, no sky would give us a pretty interesting look of everything here. Yeah, very nice. Um, we could do some sort of an environment thing here where we're reducing the atmosphere. So we have no atmosphere in that case. And yeah, looks pretty nice. Um, let's see what we can do with the sun a little bit. Seeing a good, good part here. That looks pretty nice. Okay, and we are also increasing the resolution up to one fourth, giving us a little bit more detail. And of course, we still can go over to the editing and start editing based on that one here too. It doesn't really matter. Um, you can see my FPS here. It's pretty good. Um, why, I'm, why I'm also recording this, uh, this video here. So it runs pretty well on my end. Um, yeah. And of course, sculpting is always better if you do the fast render mode. FPS goes up very quickly to a very high value and you have also a better look over everything. Okay, um, of course, I'm not an artist. I'm not a professional at designing uh, terrains or worlds like that. Um, I'm just showcasing you how to use some tools to do that. And um, I hope you liked it. I hope it helped. And uh, we will, of course, cover sculpting and everything else way more in depth in the in very near future. Um, Tyler is also going to do some really pretty amazing tutorial videos about this. So prepare for some really terrain madness. 
Thanks for watching. Have a great day and bye-bye.